Hi, everybody. Good Thursday evening to you, and welcome to the fourth round of the Texas High School Baseball Playoffs. This is VipeFortBend.com, and tonight it is Game 1, your Ridgepoint Panthers taking on the Pearland Oilers from very hot Schroeder Park here on the campus of U of H. The Ridgepoint Panthers will be the home team in tonight's Game 1, and we will set you up for it with the Batter Up Show, and you'll learn a few things about Pearland. Of course, whenever you go into these playoffs against teams that you haven't really seen very often or, in some cases, haven't seen at all, well, there's a good chance that you have a little Pandora's box feeling about it where you just don't know how your team is going to play against an unfamiliar opponent. Tonight's exclusive radio broadcast on VipeFortBend.com is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, by First Tyrant Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best prices on tires, great service, anything your vehicle needs to run at its very best. All four locations open Monday through Saturday. Visit FirstTyrantAuto.com. By Archer Volkswagen. Open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South. Just inside the Sam Houston Tollway, you will feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. And by the Needville Insurance Agency. Put hundreds of dollars back in your pocket when Bradley Stavanaugh and the Needville Insurance Agency team shop all those insurance carriers and they'll find the very lowest premium for you. You don't even have to leave your house. Call Bradley Stavanaugh and he'll save you money on your car insurance or your home insurance or both. 979-793-7411 979-793-7411 is the number, or go to needvilleinsurance.com. We'll be back with David Rogers. He's the head coach of the Pearland Oilers, whose team comes in here on a roll, but then so too do the Ridgepoint Panthers. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Welcome to the University of Houston Schroeder Field for game one of this regional semifinal series between Ridgepoint and Pearland. It's great atmosphere and it's a nice hot evening and doesn't look like wind's going to be a problem and it's time to talk to David Rogers, the head coach of the Oilers. Three years at the helm of the Pearland program and if you can, sum up the tradition of Pearland where they've had teams that have gone to the state tournament five times and they've had great little league teams. Well, you know, really, it's it's been a great baseball community. It's been really awesome to be here. And the tradition starts when they're young. Mm-hmm. And the, the little league has done a great job of getting these guys ready and getting them to where they can actually compete. And they compete at the little league level, they compete at the sub varsity level, and here at the varsity level. It's just been amazing. Now, one thing that you have that's it's great to have this going for you as a coach, you have so many excellent pitchers. You're going with Zapata on the mound to start the game one tonight. So what can you tell folks about Zapata without giving too much away? Well, he's going to compete in the strike zone. Uh, he's got you know, a great combination of pitches. He throws the, uh, the breaking ball strike, which is really good for him. And uh, he's going to battle for as long as we can keep him out there. One thing I always like to ask coaches when they've made a pretty deep playoff run, has your team really played even better than you thought they would before you entered the postseason? Or do you think their best baseball is still ahead of them? Well, the best thing about us is this whole group has really played uh, without a whole lot of highs and lows. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've played pretty even. And, you know, when we've had a few, you know, hiccups, it hasn't been because we just had a real bad either hitting or, or, or mound performance. So uh, we've been pretty even killed and we've been pretty level headed about how we play. And that's what we're really looking forward to as we try to continue this march. 
We're talking with David Rogers of Pearland, and I did not have a chance to check, but is there any history of games between Pearland and Ridgepoint? I don't remember any of those games, but I, I might have missed one or two. No, the only thing that we do is we scrimmage game one against each other. Uh, coach Welch is a great coach, good friend, and uh, we set up our first scrimmage of the year against each other, and that's about it. All right, Coach David Rogers. I plan to talk to you tomorrow night for sure and maybe even Saturday night, so I'll leave a few questions in the briefcase depending on how game one goes. So thanks for spending the time with us on the Better Up Show. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. You're on VibeFordBend.com. We'll be back with Clinton Welch, head coach of the Ridgepoint Panthers. When we continue on your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports, we are brought to you tonight by Archer Volkswagen, by First Tire and Automotive, Xfinity, and the Needville Insurance Company. We'll be right back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with... Hello, I am back, and every once in a while we have this little commercial player thing, and sometimes it just quits, and there's really no explanation for it, but we're going to go back to that commercial break and be back with Coach Welch of Ridgepoint when we continue on VibeFortBend.com. Here we go. Maybe it'll work this time. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no-term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. First Tire and Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back to the Batter Up Show. We've got Clinton Welch of Ridgepoint with us before we get this game underway at 7 o'clock. And the Panthers won last week's series over Tompkins. And so far, Coach Welch, you haven't played on an artificial surface. So uh, is there anything in particular that you needed to talk to your team about this surface before you play tonight's ball game? Not really. They've all played on a lot of turf during summer and fall baseball, so they should be good. All right. Um, does it make you nervous in any way when your team starts to get some attention? I noticed they had a little TV interview that appeared on Channel 2 last night. And uh, do you say anything to make sure that they remain focused? Not really. I mean, you, you win. You deserve to have a little fun. They've been having some fun. They'll refocus when it's game time, so they'll be fine on that issue as well, I think. 
they're ready to go. I know you've got Kellen Gratisar going tonight, and I noticed over there Zapata is the man that they're going to put on the mound. Do you know anything about the guy they're going to put out there tonight? Uh, good left-handed pitcher, good breaking ball, pretty good velocity, throws strikes. He's good. As always, Coach, I want to leave good questions in the briefcase for Game 2 and possibly Game 3. Thanks for being with us, and best of luck tonight. All right, Roger. Thanks for covering the games. All right. It's my pleasure. VibeFordBend.com. We'll be back with the starting lineups. Glad you're with us. We're at the University of Houston. And if you like it nice and warm, it's a perfect night for baseball. A gentle wind blowing out. And, you know, Ridgepoint does have a history of hitting home runs in the playoffs in this ballpark. I'll probably drop that in sometime tonight. Glad you are with us on VibeFordBend.com. Remember, we'll have all games of this series for you. And they are live and podcasted, absolutely free to listen to. And we'll be back with those starting lineups. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius. Have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates. And I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us All right, the Star Spangled Banner from Schroeder Park at the University of Houston. Here are the starting lineups for the Pearland Oilers. Anthony Avalos, the shortstop, leads off. John Moya in center field, bat second. It's the first baseman, Cade Ferraro, and he's a lefty hitter in the third spot. Brett Schmastrilla, he is the center fielder. Correction, he's the left fielder, and he bats in the cleanup spot. Braden Morse at third base. Is batting fifth for Pearland. Jace Caceres, their catcher, bats sixth. Justin Ogle is the designated hitter, and he bats in place of the starting pitcher, Mark Zapata. Logan Scott is at second base for Pearland. He's in the eighth spot, and in the nine hole, it is Isaiah Castaneda, the right fielder. So on the mound for your Ridgepoint Panthers, it is Kellen Gratisar, and he's been money in the playoffs. 3 0 with a 1.05 ERA. A start and a complete game win against Tompkins in game one of that series. A start and, and a winner in game two against Westside. That was a clincher. And he got a complete game win against Seven Lakes when they had to have it in game two of that series when the Panthers' backs were against the wall. J.J. Kennett is his catcher. Travis Vlasic playing first base at second base. Zion Stevens. Justin Vosses at shortstop, Parker Martin at third base, Carter Groen in left field, Mason Dossett in center, and Owen Ferris is in right field for the Ridgepoint Panthers. It is a very bright, sunny field at the moment, and we'll just see how long that lasts. Probably not very long, because when you're at a college ballpark, you always have taller stands, and the sun disappears a little bit sooner. 
So here we go with Anthony Avalos, the shortstop leading off. It is an artificial surface all over the entire field. Warning track, home plate, dirt, everything, even the mound. And Gratisar brings the first pitch. Curve ball in the outside corner for a strike. At the University of Houston, it's symmetrical. 330 feet down each of the foul lines. 375 feet to each power alley and 390 to straightaway center. There's a change up and it comes in high. One and one the count on Anthony Avalos. Looks like we have pretty even fanship in the park tonight. And that is fisted foul and lands within the field of play, but there was no chance for Owen Ferris to run that one down. It is 91 degrees here in, I wouldn't say beautiful downtown Houston, but the beautiful University of Houston campus, tree-lined, it's very nice. Avalos swings and he hits a three hopper to Vasas at shortstop. Has to get rid of it quickly. Low throw. Dug out by Vlasic. And that gets the first out. You get those true hops on the artificial surface. And a lot of infielders like that. Sometimes batters like it. If it speeds up, maybe a ball that's hit on the ground with some top spin, it can help it get into the outfield. Now John Moya, the center fielder. Lefty hitter, although it didn't say that on the roster that I had, and he swings at the first pitch. Pop up in foul ground on the right side. Zion Stevens near the line, moving over, and he can't make the catch. It's a fair ball. It was hanging up there a long time. Travis Vlasic was calling for it at first, and then he couldn't find it. So there's a runner on. John Moya reaches, and that's a tough error to give to Zion Stevens. I don't know. I just don't know. But the bottom line is John Moya is on base. Well, they give him a hit. So, okay, single for John Moya. Now Cade Ferraro, and this guy's a good ball player. He's a lefty hitter, just like Moya. There's a throw over, and it's close. Mike Grine is our first base umpire tonight. He's standing in the sun at the moment. And he made that safe call. Ferraro, wide open stance, swings at a changeup and comes up empty. Ferraro had two homers in the Oilers' 3-2 win in game one against Clear Creek. That was the third round series. And he pitched a complete game in game two to clinch that series. And I'm sure we'll see him on the mound probably tomorrow night. Gratisar made another, another throw over and did not get his man. Moya hesitant to take his secondary lead. It's a pretty short lead. There's a ground ball. Stevens to his left, scoops it. His only play is to first, and he gets Ferraro. Two away, and Moya moves to second base. And now it is Brett Schmostrela in game two against Clear Creek. He had a triple. An RBI and scored a run. Pearland is wearing the road gray uniforms with the maroon pinstripes and the maroon letters and numerals outlined in black. Gratisar looks back at Moya leading off of second. First pitch is a hard ground ball. Deep short, Vasas has it, but he has to eat the ball. By the time he picked it up, it was simply too late to throw out the speedy Smostrela. So that's two singles for Pearland in the first inning, but neither one of them reached the outfield in the usual way. One of them was just a high pop-up that dropped in. And on the play, by the way, Moya stayed at second base. So now it is Braden Morse, right-handed hitter. Standing near the back of the box. Gratisar brings it. Breaking ball just missed outside. They play him slightly to pull in the outfield. Gratisar looks back at Moya. Brings it. Check swing, but it's a strike on the outside corner. 
Our home plate umpire is Kevin Ellis, and as I said a few moments ago, Mike Grine at first base, David Spiegel, the second base umpire, and Dwayne Cooper is at third base. So we'll have those gentlemen throughout this series. Gratisar, ready to bring the 1-1. One -one. Here it comes, and that's a line drive into left field. Carter growing up with it, and he fires home, and they hold the runner at third base. And that's a good idea, because Groen has quite an arm. Parker Martin had the ball kind of squirt between his feet, but at that point, Moya had already put on the brakes and parked it. So Smostrela is at second. Braden Morse now at first base with a single, and Jace Caceres comes up. So Pearland went to the state tournament five times and they won it way back in 1980 where the largest classification in Texas UIL sports was, was called 4A. Now the biggest is 6A. Gratisar brings it, just missing the inside corner and a check swing by Caceres, the catcher for these Pearland Oilers. 1-0. Gratisar trying to keep Pearland off the board in this first inning, two outs and the base is loaded. He goes from the windup, brings it. That's a strike at the letters, outside corner. I think Pearland has, and Ridgepoint have brought an equal number of fans. There's a pitch that just misses away to Caceres. Gratisar rubbing up the baseball, now brings it. That is fouled back over the screen and over the press box. It's not a real high profile press box at the University of Houston, but it's taller than your garden variety high school ballpark. By the way, Gratisar looking pretty good on TV, talking to local too. I don't know if they sent Randy McElvoy out there to interview him, but it looked that way. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a healthy cut, but fouled back again, this time into the screen. University of Houston here has a warning track, but not in the true sense of the word. It's the same surface, so it's just a different color. Swing and a foul tip into Kenneth Smith. Big strikeout for Gratisar, his first of the game, and the Pearland Oilers leave the bases loaded in the top of the first. We'll be back with the Ridgepoint Panthers coming to bat on BiteFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Iron Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for great savings. The First Iron Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 
All right, here goes the Ridge Point offensive night in this game one against Pearland. They kept the Oilers off the board, but they flirted with disaster. No runs on three hits, no errors, and three men left on base for Pearland. Righty, or lefty versus righty, I should say, as Zapata works to Zion Stevens, and the first pitch is on the inside corner for a strike. Zapata is committed to go to Texas State. From the windup, brings it, and a late swing by Stevens, and he fouls it off the roof on the right side. That's another advantage to the University of Houston if you're playing day games, but of course, all three of these games of the series will be starting at 7 p.m., but if you're here for a hot afternoon game, you can go to the top and get some relief. Here's the 0-2, down and in to Stevens. Stevens with a 360 on base percentage and a double in this postseason. He has walked six times. Crowds the plate from the right handed box, and that pitch is high, two and two. Pearland 37, I'm sorry, 31 7 and 1 with 17 straight wins. Here's the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Stevens is out. What a way, and now it is Parker Martin. Parker with a double, a 250 batting average in this postseason. He's driven in two runs and scored a pair of runs himself. Left handed hitter to face Zapata. I'm sorry, Zapata. Mark Zapata. He brings it. Martin looks at that one, sails outside, and slips out of the mid of Caceres. Pearland, the number one seed out of District 22 6A. They had a record of 13 and 1. Martin looks at a strike on the outside corner. That evens the count 1 and 1. The last team to defeat the Oilers was Alvin, which beat them 8 to 7 on March 22nd. So a 17 game hit streak. Is, uh, it's impressive, but there's a little something else to the story as Martin fouls one out of play. It's one and two. That something else to the story, I'll tell you after Martin's plate appearance is over. And a little number to the left side. Weakly hit. Morse, the third baseman, comes up, throws on the run, and gets his man as Ferraro has to lean to his right off the bag. But nice defense there from Pearland. So some Fort Bend teams that have been in the highest classification back in 2015 and 2016 baseball years know what it's like against the A-Leaf teams. Part of that win streak for Pearland in their 17 straight was six straight wins against Hastings, Elsick, and Taylor. First pitch to Justin Vasas is outside for ball one. And the combined score in those six wins for Pearland was 90 to five. So that's where six of the wins came from that were, were not very difficult for Pearland. A Leaf has some fine teams in other sports, but they have not been able to get competitive in baseball. It is two and oh on Vasis after he took the second pitch low and rolls over on one. It's a ground ball to Morse at third. His throw across makes it a one, two, three inning. Two plays, or two assists, I should say, by Morse in that inning. And we'll be back after one inning, no score between Pearland and Richpoint on fightfortbend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. 
Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. You hear that song? That is Rapper's Delight. And the last time, or when it was, um, when it was moving up the charts. The Pearland Oilers were closing in on a state championship in 1980. They beat San Antonio Roosevelt in the title game 9-4. And there was a player on that team named Craig Smostrela, who's had several nephews to go through the program, but no sons. He's got only daughters, and he is a scout. And I'm hoping I get a chance to talk to him for one of our Batter Up shows during this series. All right, Justin Ogle will lead it off. He's the DH batting for Zapata. Gratisar starts him with a fastball, but it's high. Ball one. Justin Ogle was two for three and scored a run in that game two against Clear Creek, a 6-2 win that finished off a sweep. The 1-0 to him, he swings and fouls it straight back into the screen. So Gratisar was able to pitch around three hits. The Oilers left the bases loaded in their half of the first, and only one of those three hits was hit hard. It was a solid single left by Braden Morse. Now the pitch to Ogle. That's upstairs. That makes it two and one. Shadows from the third base side stands have crept over the mound, which is black field turf here at the U of H, and all the, the base cutouts and home plate are bright scarlet. There's a foul ball back and to the right. Ogle takes a moment to adjust the Velcro on those gloves. Gratisar looks over the top of his glove and ready to bring the 2-2. Upstairs and the count goes full. First full count on the evening for Gratisar. Ogle batting for Mark Zapata, the number one pitcher for Pearland. And there's, there's a nice spoil pitch as Ogle fights it off and sends it back over the screen. The fence appears to be nine feet tall, maybe ten, going all around the outfield. There's another foul ball out of play. And it lands on top of the metal roof. So to straightaway center in Daryl and Lori Schroeder Park, there's a very high opaque screen, but it's a batter's eye basically, and there's a yellow stripe below it. So if you hit that batter's eye, you've got a home run. There is a pitch that is powered to left field, and it gets down between Groen and Dossett. Dossett picks it up and powers it in. And there's the first extra base hit of the night. Justice, uh, Justin Ogle with a double. So they've hit a few balls hard off of Gratisar, but he's got a pitch around a leadoff double here. Now it is Logan Scott. Logan Scott had the game-winning RBI, a single, in game one against Clear, uh, Clear Creek. And then two RBIs in that game two clincher. Here's the pitch to him. Puts down a bunt, but it stays in the batter's box. It's foul. Nothing in one. Ridge Point has won 12 of its last 13. They've outscored opponents in that streak. 3.57 runs to 2.43. Before we get the 0-1, we get a look back at second and no pickoff throw. Ridge Point won its clincher over Tompkins last Friday night, 9-7. You take that out of the calculation. They're scoring less than three runs a game, but allowing less than two runs a game in the playoffs. There's a bunt picked up by Gratisar over by the first baseline. 
And he throws out Scott. The sacrifice works perfectly, and Justin Ogle is now at third base. One away, and now it is Isaiah Castaneda. He's the right fielder. And a tall drink of water in that right-handed batter's box. Gratisar will go from the windup with the runner at third. Here it comes. Let up pitch. Swung on and missed. Castaneda had swung well over it and had finished his swing by the time the ball was crossing the plate. Now here comes the 0-1. Curveball just missed high, and the Ridgepoint fans really wanted the preferred call on that one. Slight wind blowing out toward right field. Castaneda ready for the 1-1, and he slices it foul over the net, off the metal roof, and down into the student section. Castaneda ready. Here comes the one-two. Oh, very close, but a ball outside. Here comes the two-two. Breaking ball away, and he goes three-two for the second time in this top of the second. No score between Ridgepoint and Pearland, but the Oilers have a man at third with only one out. That's Justin Ogle who led off the inning with a double. There's a ball sliced high in the air and foul out of play on the right side and it gets over the grassy berm outside the first base dugout. Ridge Point is parked in there. Favorable shade patterns for both teams as neither one of them had to stand out in the sun and bake. Here comes the payoff pitch. High in the air to right field. Owen Ferris tracking it. Got the shades down. Makes the catch. Here comes his throw home. And it is not going to get Ogle. And he scores the first run of the game on a sacrifice fly by Isaiah Castaneda. So the base is clean and two outs. And back to the top of the order, Anthony Avalos, who grounded out to shortstop his first time. In the back of the right-handed batter's box, first pitch to him. It's a little nubber that rolls over into foul ground on the left side. Here's the 0-1. Check swing, did he go around? And first base umpire Mike Grind says no, he did not swing. Avalos ready, here it comes. There's a strike on the outside corner, it's one and two. Gratisar shakes off a sign from catcher J.J. Kennett. Now rocks and fires. Over but low, just underneath the kneecaps of Anthony Avalos. Game two tomorrow night at seven, and game three, if we need it, will be... Hold on a second. Here's a pitch that is low, another 3-2 count. I, I was afraid that I had said something incorrectly, so tomorrow night, Friday night, is game two. And if we need it, then on Saturday night, game three, both of those starting at 7 p.m. Here's a payoff pitch. That's a pop-up in foul ground behind first base. Vlasic tracking it. Now it's Zion Stevens who catches it in foul ground. And Travis falls down, but he gets a low five from Owen Ferris. So one run scores on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. We will go to the bottom of the second. Pearland one. Ridgepoint, nothing on VipeFortBend.com. Okay, I'm still here. The commercial thing's not working. Hold on.
Okay, so I'll just keep talking to you. How was your day? No, seriously, I can tell you uh, I had mentioned that Pearland in 1980 won its only baseball state championship. They beat San Antonio Roosevelt 9-4 to in that title game. They came back the next year and got to the final but lost 7-3 to to Lubbock Monterey. Then in 1984, they lost to eventual state champion Brazoswood in the semifinals in 84. Then it was a while, but they got back in 2009 and lost to Lufkin. Oh, what a heartbreaker in 11 innings, 4-2 to two in the semifinal round. And then they lost to Flower Mound. I hate when that happens in 2014 in the semis by a score of 8-1. to one. Okay, we're going to have a new commercial player ready to go at the next half inning. But right now, we're rolling commercial free here on VipeFortBend.com. Travis Vlasic to lead it off for the Panthers, who went down 1-2-3 with Zapata pitching. So lefty working to righty. Pitch to Vlasic. Swings at the first one. It's a ground ball to second base. Scott has it. Throws over to Ferraro. One pitch, one out in the bottom of the second. So I was going to tell you all about Travis Vlasic, how he's hitting 391 in the postseason. Tied for the team lead in hits with Justin Vosses. They both have nine. He's got a double. He's got a sacrifice fly and four RBIs. But now quickly, we go ahead and go to J.J. Kennett, Ridgepoint catcher and a bubbly young man. And the first pitch to him is a strike. J.J. has a pair of doubles in the postseason. Three runs driven in. Pretty good speed for a catcher. Zapata rocks and fires. And that is a solid single to center field. J.J. Kennett gets on with one away. Great contact. He laced that one straight up the middle. See if the temperature has gone down a little bit. Not really, about 90 degrees. It was 91 when we started. And now here is Carter Groen, who's been very clutch with the bat. 250 batting average, 6 for 24, but he's got three doubles, including a two-run double that just about got out of the ballpark at Tompkins last Friday night in that 9-7 clinching win. So he's got power. He can hit it out to left field. Swings and misses at a curve. Zapata pretty good at moving the ball around. He can throw that curve for strikes almost any time. That is what Coach David Rogers told us in the batter-up show. Nothing and one on growing. Here it comes. And he smacks it at shortstop where it's caught by Avalos on a liner that's tough luck because Groen really scalded that baseball but there are two away and the courtesy runner for J.J. Kennett is still at first base I think that's Jake Stratton so Ridgepoint starting to make solid contact Kennett got the uh, liner into center field and Groen hit the ball very hard to the shortstop, Avalos. First pitch to Owen Ferris is outside for ball, and he squared around to bunt, even though there are two outs. The shade from the third base stands is starting to extend past. It has extended past the baseline between first and second. Zapata comes set at the belt, now throws over to first base. And I think now that is Blaine Ryan. I, I thought it was Jake Stratton. Number nine, Blaine Ryan, who coincidentally, uh, his, his last name rhymes with the first base umpire, Mike Grine. One and nothing, the count on Ferris. Here it comes. Swings and misses at a curveball. Zapata's curveball moves so much slower than his fastball. And he gives you that same delivery action, so you're all geared up for something coming in a lot faster 
He can make you look silly. Here comes the 1-1. There goes Ryan, and it is a ball inside and off the catcher's uh, Kitsaris. I think that uh, Ryan was going to steal second anyway. So we'll give him a stolen base. And a man in scoring position for Ferris, and the count is 2-1. and one. That had to be some kind of cross-up. Caceres just didn't look like he was ready for that pitch down and in from Zapata. Pitch on the way. Ferris looks at a curve, and that's in there again. When he's got that great action on the curve, it's so hard to hit it. And in that case, Ferris was just thinking, I'll take it and hope that it's not called a strike, but it was, so it's two and two. Zapata brings it. Curveball is called strike three. All right, so that'll do it for Ridgepoint. They pick up no runs. They do get one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. So we will continue here on VibeFortBend.com. We have played two, Pearland one, Ridgepoint nothing. Glad you're with us. First round of the, uh, first game, I should say, of the fourth round of the playoffs, the Region 3 6A semifinals. We'll be back. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Baseball State Championship starting Wednesday, June 8th at UFCU Dish Fought Field in Austin and Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. John Moya leads off and takes the first pitch in there for a strike from Ridge Point's Kellen Gratisar. Moya led off with a single but got to third, did not get home, however. Curveball from Gratisar fools Moya. He swings over it, and it's nothing in two. Moya steps out and now quickly back in. He's ready for the 0-2, and here it comes. And it's that dead fish change up, and it doesn't go to the strike zone, and Moya takes it for a ball. One and two. Gratisar rocks and fires. That is off the end of the bat to left field. Groen coming on, and he it goes underneath him. He made an attempt to catch it, and that's going to be at least two bases for Moya. Now Groen picks it up and throws it back in, and Moya ends up at third. Tough to know what to do on that one. Groen was thinking, you know, maybe I ought to go ahead and try to make the catch, and he came very close to doing that. So that is a triple for John Moya, who's two for two now. Now Cade Ferraro, 0 for 1 with a ground out to second. Ridgepoint fell behind in their game one against Tompkins, 1 to nothing, and they ended up winning it in the bottom of the seventh. They don't want to fa fall way behind the Pearland Oilers is on the first pitch. Ferraro yanks it down the left field line. We mentioned that he had those two homers in the Oilers' 3-2 win in game one against Clear Creek. On, Ferraro is going to go to Texas A&M just like Justin Vosses of Ridgepoint. Steps out of the left-handed box, now gets back in there. 
Pitch on the way. Off the end of the bat and trickles over to the left side of home plate. Foul. Braden Morse waiting to bat next for Pearland. The Oilers lead it one to nothing, but looking for another one here in the top of the third. They have a runner at first base with nobody out. And either Gratisar stepped off or Ferraro asked for time. Here's the pitch. Kennett wants it outside. And Gratisar hit the target, but it's a ball. Throughout the season, we've been keeping up with the rankings in the pro or I should say the poll of choice for me is the Diamond Pro THSB Top 25. Swing and a miss. Beautiful change up to get Ferraro. First out. And the second strikeout for Gratisar. Now Brett Smostrilla, and like I said... It's his uncle Craig, not his dad Craig, who was part of that 1980 Pearland Championship team. First pitch outside to Smostrilla. Triple, an RBI, and a run scored in game two against Clear Creek. Gratisar, Roxanne brings it. Foul straight back. One and two the count. He's in the midpoint of the right-handed batter's box. And he sit, hits one to left field. Groen coming on, and this one does bounce in front of him. And that will score the run. It's a single for Smostrela, and it drives home John Moya. It's 2 to nothing Pearland here in the top of the third. Smostrela, two for two with a pair of singles. Now Braden Morse. Pearland evidently celebrates runs scored in the same way that Ridgepoint celebrates its runs. Morse with a first inning single. Looks at the first pitch strike on the outside corner with the fluttering slider from Gratisar. Practically no wind whatsoever. There's a throw over and a dive back by Smostrela. S-M-A-J-S-T-R-L-A, -S and I always knew how to say it because they were state champs in 1980. The 0-1, high pop up on the infield, behind second, Stevens is calling for it, moving to his right, makes that catch. Two away, and Smostrela stays at first. Jace Caceres now, 0 for 1 with the first inning strikeout. Taps the outside corner of the plate, then the inside one. Slightly open stance from the right-handed box. And a throw over, Smostrilla dives back in. The field turf surface at Schroeder Park at U of H is, it's harder than most. There's a curveball. And it's right down Cullen Boulevard for a strike. Nothing in one on Caceres. Pitch on the way. That is high in the air, and that'll be an infield pop-up. Vasas has it behind second base, and he's got it. Two pop-ups get Gratisar out of a little bit of trouble, unfortunately, for the Panthers. One run came in on two hits for the Pearland Oilers. No errors and one runner left on base. We'll continue to the bottom of the third. Pearland two, Ridgepoint nothing in game one. We'll be back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. 
Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Will Baker leads off for the Ridgepoint Panthers. In the bottom of inning number three, they trail two to nothing to Pearland. The Panthers are 31 and four, and they are four and one in one run games. The only team to beat them in a one run game was the Austin Bulldogs back on April 12th. That was a one nothing game. First pitch is a ball to Will Baker. Hitting 333, four for 12 in the playoffs. And the second pitch to him is a strike at the knees. Two RBIs for Will, the younger brother of Jack Baker, who was part of the 2019 state finalist team. They won their regional final series over Kingwood and wrapped it up right here on the surface of Schroeder Park. A foul ball out of play by Baker, and it's one and two. Crowds the plate from the left-handed box. Leans away from a curveball, but it's high. It almost looked like it dropped back into the zone. Zapata is real good at making the ball move. We'll talk about polling when we get a chance. There's a curveball called strike three, and down goes Baker. Three strikeouts for Zapata. One away, and now it's Mason Dossett, the center fielder. Dossett got back into action in that series against Tompkins after running into the wall in game one against Seven Lakes. He's two for six with a run scored, 333 average in the postseason, and the first pitch to him is a ball. Dossett with incredible speed. His first look at Zapata, who's been carving up Ridgepoint pretty well so far. Pitch inside for a ball. It's two and nothing. So I'm pretty impressed with this Diamond Pro THSB Class 6A Top 25. They last put one out on May the 2nd. Pitch is a strike at the letters on the outside corner to Dossett. It's two and one. 14 of the teams in the Top 25 are out. Now that we have 16 left in the playoff bracket. Way high, got away from Zapata. Threw it all the way to the backstop and Parker Martin comes out of the on-deck area to pick it up. So it's three and one. Doss has got to make it be there right here. Here it comes. Outside ball four and they've got speed on the base pass. First walk issued by Zapata. And Dossett, by the way, has only attempted one steal in the postseason, and he was caught. But I think he's feeling, you know, closer to 100%, and maybe they will send him. There's some beach balls bouncing around behind the backstop, and uh, that might be a problem for Pearland, but it's their students who are doing it. Stevens takes the first pitch, curveball in the outside corner. Nothing in one. Stevens 0 for 1 tonight. Dossett, let's see if he can make those purple Nike spikes 
fly down to second. If indeed that's what Coach Welch has in mind. He goes through those signs over there in the third base coaching box. Stevens ready. Here comes the 0-1. Swings and misses at the curve. Gossett stretches out his lead. Zapata looks over there. Now brings it. And that's a slow roller towards second. And it's going to be everybody safe. Safe on an error is Zion Stevens. Scott just, uh, he had an easy play, but I guess uh, maybe he looked away from the ball before he saw it go securely into his glove. So that's an easy, an E4. Dossett now at second. One out for Parker Martin. Martin grounded out to third his first time. And they play him to hit it the other way in the outfield, but you know if, if Parker Martin could pull one down the right field line, assuming that Castaneda stays where he is, which is a long way from the line, it could be maybe a triple for Martin, but now you have Ferraro, the first baseman, waving Castaneda back toward the line a little bit. There's still some room out there. Ridgepoint ranked number five in the very last, the May 2nd poll, and trying to come back down two to nothing. Parker Martin swings at a curve, and it's to short center field. Coming on is Moya, and it drops in. Everybody is safe. How about that? Parker Martin, somehow he found Scarlet Field Turf. Moya got a really good break on it, and he was in a dead-on sprint, but he just could not get there. So Stevens now at second. Dossett has moved to third, and there is only one out with the bases loaded, and it's JV coming up, Justin Vosses. 375 batting average before tonight's game. Three doubles, and he's tied for the team hit lead with nine in the playoffs. Seven runs driven in. That leads the team. First pitch bounces in, and Caceres, it actually hit Vosses in the leg. Zapata's control has been immaculate, but right there, I don't know what happened on that one, but it bounced up and hit Vosses, and Dossett comes across the plate, and Ridgepoint will take it. It is now 2-1. to one. Now it's Travis Vlasic, who before this game started was actually hitting for a slightly better postseason average than Vosses. He was at 391, and now we've got time called, and... Coach Rogers wanted to go out and talk to Zapata. Meanwhile, the base runners were over there talking to Coach Welch near third base. So to reset it for you, Stevens is at third. Parker Martin is at second. Vasas is at first. He was just hit by a pitch to drive in the first Ridgepoint run. And it's Travis Vlasic. 0 for 1 with a ground ball out at second base. When he came up in the second, Zapata's going to go from the windup. Here's the pitch. And that is hammered to left field. That is hit deep down the line, and it gets down. It's into the corner. Steven scores. Martin scores. Vasa scores. And it's a three-run double for Travis Vlasic. Ridge Point takes the lead. Four to two, and they still have something going here in the third. Only one out. Attaboy, Travis. So it's really kind of helpful, I have to say. You know, it does wonders for the heart when your team kind of makes uh, a comeback and responds and doesn't go to the bottom of the seventh having not scored a run. Of course, a long way to go in this one. We'll see if J.J. Kennett can keep the merry-go-round going. 
Zapata comes set. Nobody holding Vlasic at second. Here's the pitch. Just missing the inside corner. Ball one to Kennett. He got the first ridge point hit in the second inning. Oilers have out hit Ridge Point 6-3, but the Panthers lead it 4-2. Hard ground ball to shortstop, and they're going to go to third and try to tag out Vlasic. He's out, and I don't think Coach Welch wanted him to go. So Kennett safe on a fielder's choice, but Vlasic is now the second out. But Carter Groen now comes up, and... Vlasic gave that pitch a ride toward left field, and I'm going back in time to a wonderful memory in game two, I believe, of the series against Kingwood. I can't remember if it was game one or game two, the regional final series, when Austin Bradbury hit a home run over the left field fence to really get Ridge Point going. There's a pitch down and in for a ball to Groen. I'm thinking maybe it was game two. I think Hayde Key was pitching, and once you gave Hayde Key a 2-0 lead back in 2019, he was money. Here's the 1-0 to Groen. Big swing, but he fouls it back in to the right, off the metal roof. Want to thank Katie Ordman, Jake Velasquez, and the great staff here at the University of Houston. We love to do ball games here. It's a great facility, but it also means that it's a high stakes series. Here's a throw over. Easily back in is the courtesy runner for Kennett and that is Blaine Ryan. One and one the count on Carter Groen. Big two run double in the clincher against Tompkins. Game winning RBI in game one against Tompkins with a single, another throw over, and Ryan dives back in. The one one to Groen, checked his swing and it was high for a ball, good judgment on his part. And Carter also had the sacrifice fly to beat um, the West Side Wolves in game one. West side had really, really been tough. But the Panthers won it in the bottom of the seventh. That is a curveball, and that is ripped down the left field line. It is going to one-hop the wall. Coming around third is Ryan, and they will send him home. Here he comes. Here's the relay. He is out at the plate. <laughs> Pearland with a great job there. Number three, Braden Morse, the third baseman, relayed it from Smostrela. And Pearland avoids any further damage after they fell behind 4-2. to two. But Groen really crushed that one. Rich Point comes up with four runs on three hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We'll go to the fourth. Rich Point four, Pearland two. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Siren Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Siren Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. All right, here we go. Pearland coming up in the top of the fourth. It'll be Ogle, Scott, and Castaneda. Gratisar has a lead to work with for the first time. 
Fly ball to right field on the first pitch. Stevens going out. Ferris has it. Always the outfielder's prerogative since he's got everything in front of him to call the infielders off, and Ferris did it right there. By the way, Ferris's torso is in sunlight. His feet are in shade. So pretty soon we will have nothing but shade all over the field. Night will fall, and it'll be a great scene for playoff baseball. Now Logan Scott put down a sacrifice bunt his first time up. Looks at a ball downstairs. Hello? Logan Scott had a game-winning RBI in game one against Clear Creek, and there he takes a strike at the letters. Two RBIs in the game, two clincher over Clear Creek. Here comes the next one, curveball, catches the outside corner, and Gratisar starting to feel it, it looks like, one and two. Pitch on the way, swing and just getting a piece of the ball, and it trickles behind home plate. Castaneda picks it up. Radisar brings it way outside with the slider, trying to get him to chase. Scott, too smart for that. The count's two and two. Here comes the next one. And that is going to be sent to right field. Ferris is tracking that one. He can't find it, or can he? He kind of stuck his hands out like he couldn't find it, but he knew where it was. Maybe he was just messing with us. Isaiah Castaneda, sacrifice fly in the second to drive home the second Pearland run. Here's a pitch from Gratisar. That is high for a ball. I've been trying to talk about that pole, but it just hasn't seemed the right time. But Rockwall Heath is 26-4 or they were at the end of the season. And they're number one in the poll. There's a ground ball to Vasas at short. Easy play. Right to Vlasic would have hit him in the chin. A perfect throw. And it's the first one, two, three inning that Gratisar has had. So we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Ridgepoint leading by a score of four to two. We'll be back. This is VibeFortBend.com. We're your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. All right, so before Owen Ferris bats, I want to talk about this poll. Rockwall Heath, number one, and they're playing Oak Ridge in a series where all games are being played in Corsicana. So good luck to the Oak Ridge War Eagles. It would be great. If you uh, knocked one of those DFW teams out of the Region 2 bracket. Lake Travis is the best team in Region 4. It looks like they're number three in the state according to the poll. And they play La Jolla this week. First pitch swinging by Ferris. It's a two hopper to the shortstop Avalos. And he throws right on target to Ferraro. One pitch, one out. And Ferris is 0 for 2. Now Will Baker struck out looking. His first time up. The young lefty getting his first look, or second look rather, at Zapata. Who Roxanne brings the first one. Strike on the outside corner. 
Coppell out of DFW is playing 2019 state champion South Lake Carroll in a series. Carroll is ranked 10th, Coppell ranked 4th. Here's a pitch that gets underneath the catcher, Caceres, and it's 2 and nothing. You know, the scoreboard says 2 and 0, but I think the umpire called the first pitch a strike, so I think it's 1 and 1. Yeah, I think that's right. That pitch is a strike at the letters. So if I'm correct, uh, Kevin Ellis has it at 1 and 2. The scoreboard says 2 and 1. Here's the pitch to Baker, and he fights it off, fouls it off over the third base stands. So Ridge Point, number five, Pearland number 12. But remember, this poll came out on May the 2nd. So 14 of the top 25 teams are out. Baker fights it off again, sprays it off the left side. They have high screens that protect the fans that are sitting behind the dugouts. So it is two and two, and we know that because Kevin Ellis, the home plate umpire, has held up the fingers, and a curveball fools Baker. He goes down swinging. Two away. Now Dossett, the center fielder. And with one out in the third, he drew a walk, and he came around to score on a hit-by-pitch with the bases loaded. And then you had the three-run double and there's a ground ball to second. Easy play for Scott. Charges and throws out Dossett. So it goes 4-3, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Zapata. We'll go to the top of the fifth. Ridge Point leading by a score of 4-2 on VibeFortMen.com. More polling info when we come back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for taking care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Avalos leads it off for Pearland. The Oilers trail 4-2 to to your Ridge Point Panthers here in the top of the fifth. Game one of a best of three series. This is the Region 36A semifinal. There's a strike at the letters. One and one now on Avalos. He's 0 for 2 with a ground ball to short and a foul pop up to second. Second baseman Zion Stevens, I should say. Pitch on the way, upstairs. And the count 2 and 1. Flower Mound Marcus is ranked 6th and they play number 7 ranked Keller in a playoff series this weekend. Here's the 2 1. Fly ball towards center. Dossett with a long run to his left. No problem. He makes it look easy. And the leadoff hitter for the Oilers, thanks to the effective pitching of Kellen Gratisar, is 0 for 3. Now John Moya, he's the guy that uh, Gratisar hadn't been able to do anything with. A single and a triple for Moya. 
Lefty hitter, Gratisar brings it with a slow wind up and it's a slow curve that he just gets a piece of and it dribbles over on the right side. San Antonio Reagan still alive in the region 4-6A. They're playing Eagle Pass this, this weekend. There's a ground ball toward Vlasic at first. He will underhand it to Gratisar covering and the out is quickly made. Seven straight, retired by Gratisar. Now Cade Ferraro, who's 0 for 2, with a looking strikeout in the third. Ferraro ready, Gratisar brings it, curveball outside. So I'm thinking you can just punch the ticket. It'll be San Antonio Reagan taking on Austin Westlake. Or correction, uh, Lake Travis next week in the Region 4 final. I'm sure of that. Called strike to Cade Ferraro. One and one the count. Wide open stance from the left-handed box. Here's the pitch. Just got a piece of it but it's fouled back between the feet of J.J. Kennett, the catcher, and it's one and two. One, two on the way. Almost, but it's outside for ball two. Here's the 2-2, and fisted foul on the left. Tied him up inside. It remains 2-2. Two and two. Kenneth gives Gratisar the sign. He rocks and fires. Just outside, oh my goodness. Ridgepoint fans were ready to celebrate a looking strikeout. And I think it was correct. It was close, however. Now ready for a 3-2 pitch with two outs and the base is empty. Here it comes. And that is a fly ball to Ferris in right. Well hit, but he's right there. He has to kind of <laughs> jump up. It uh, was hit a little bit harder than he thought it was, but he makes the play. And there you have it. Eight straight retired by Gratisar will go to the bottom of the fifth. Ridge Point leads the Oilers 4 to 2. First Siren Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Siren Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Siren Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Glad to have you with us here at the U of H. Game one of this regional semifinal baseball playoff series. Ridge Point has moved out on top of Pearland 4-2. Kellen Gratisar looks like he's very comfortable on the mound. And Zapata has been very effective for Pearland thus far in his four innings. Four hits allowed, four runs, three of those earned. He struck out four and walked only one. His strike percentage is 65%. Pretty good. Now here is Stevens to lead off the Ridge Point fifth in the first pitch outside for a ball. 
Stevens reached on an error and he was the first one to come across the plate when Travis Vlasic hit a three run double. Strike on the outside corner, it's one and one. With Pearland in the field, they're throwing beach balls around behind the backstop and I wonder if that might bother the fielders a little bit. And they are right in front of my, Flynn, uh, my friend Joe Gleason of ABC 13 shooting video. So we'll probably see highlights of this game on ABC 13 as that pitch is down and into Stevens and the count is three and one. 81 miles per hour on that last delivery from Zapata. The left-hander rocks and fires. There's a strike at the knees and the count goes full on Stevens. Zapata with a big deep breath. Lefty working to righty, here it comes. Down and in, ball four, and Stevens draws a walk. That is the seventh time in this postseason that he's drawn a walk. And he is blazing fast. But oddly enough, unless I've overlooked something, he has not stolen a base in the postseason. So we will see if Coach Welch gives him the green light here. And now Parker Martin stands in. He's one for two with a single in the third. Zapata throws over and Stevens goes back to the bag casually. Zapata shakes off a sign from Caceres. Now comes set. Here's the pitch. Martin bunts it. It hits the ground. He's going to throw to first from the seat of his pants. Zapata is and gets the out on Parker Martin. So that's a nice athletic play. He came very close to catching it in the air. But the sacrifice works. And one to three it goes for the first out. Stevens now at second. And Justin Voss is up. He grounded out to third and was hit by a pitch. And Zapata turns around and looks at second, does not make a throw. Now he brings it. Vasas wanted to go after that one, but he took it high for a ball. Open stance by Vosses back of the right-handed batter's box. Here comes the 1-0. Curve ball, and he took it high. Ridge Point leading 4-2 in game one of this playoff series. They swept Tompkins last week. Pitch on the way. Vosses leans back. It's high, not far from his chin, and it's 3-0. Travis Vlasic, who has had the most impactful base hit of the night, waits on deck. Pitch on the way. And it's ball four high. Vasas, after getting hit by a pitch, now takes a walk. And there's going to be a mound visit. Coach David Rogers goes out there and he wants to talk to Zapata. So let me just say a couple more things. Uh, first of all, the, the great teams in this poll from the Houston area who are out of the playoffs. Katie Tompkins. Cy Fair. I don't know if Brian College Station. I don't know that Brian is part of the Houston area, but they're not too far away. Summer Creek is out. Clear Falls. Fort Bend Travis and guess what uh, there are five teams that are out of the top 25 but they are still playing one of them we've already mentioned Oak Ridge the Oak Ridge War Eagles in region two taking on number one Rockwall Heath this weekend the Woodlands is active and uh, let's see they're playing against Rockwall 
So it's Rockwall Heath against Oak Ridge and the Woodlands against regular Rockwall. Straight Jesuit playing Katie in the other side of the Region 3 semifinals. And Eagle Pass and La Jolla are fodder for Lake Travis and San Antonio Reagan. All right. The conversations are over. Vlasic is in the batter's box. Zapata has the battle plan, brings it way outside to Travis Vlasic. So with that three-run double, Vlasic is now, uh, he's got seven RBIs on the postseason. Here's the 1-0. Swings and misses at a curveball, and Zapata is so good with that breaking pitch, and it's at 65 miles an hour. So we've been seeing him throw the harder stuff at 81, and then he brings the curve at 65, and it's almost unfair, but somehow Ridgepoint has managed to cobble out four clutch hits. Not to mention a line drive caught by the shortstop Avalos. Here's the pitch. Vlasic started to pull the trigger, left it alone because it was just a tough pitch, and it's a strike on the outside corner, one and two. Vlasic with his toe, his left toes in a closed stance. You don't see that very often. On the line of the right-handed batter's box, the one-two, and he slices it down the right field line. It's down for a hit. Here comes Stevens around third. He scores to make it five to two. Here comes Vasas. It is six to two. Another double and five RBIs on the night for Travis Vlasic. And thus far, he is just absolutely breaking Pearland hearts here in game one. He likes those doubles. So he's got three of those on the postseason. Two more RBIs come in, and he's driven in nine. And I think David Rogers, the head coach for Pearland, is going to make a move right here. Yep, he's calling for the left-hander, and we'll tell you who the left-hander is when we return on ViteFortBend.com. Zapata gets a hand from the Pearland fans. We'll be right back on ViteFortBend.com. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and 9 auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Baseball State Championship starting Wednesday, June 8th at UFCU Dishfought Field in Austin and Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. So it is the left-hander Caden Schmidt who's going to come on in relief of Zapata. I don't have any numbers on Caden Schmidt. I can tell you he's tall and slender and he wears just the regular light tan colored glove on his right hand he wears number nine and it looks like he's going to be pitching from the stretch by the way we've got uh, Jake Stratton who I believe is running for Travis Vlasic at second base and Kennett will come up there JJ seems to enjoy everything I ever see him do All right, 
J.J., right-handed hitter, gets the, the thrill of getting the first look at a new pitcher, Caden Schmidt. Looks back at Stratton, leading off of second. First pitch is high and away for ball one on J.J. Pearland was feeling pretty good about things after two and a half innings. They led two to nothing, but then Ridgepoint came back with four in the bottom of the third, and they've scored two in the bottom of the fifth. Only one out. That pitch high and away to Kennett. It's two and nothing. Steps out of the right-handed batter's box and takes a good hard practice swing. They pay him, uh, play him very slightly to pull and pretty shallow in the outfield. There's that curveball, came in high. Three and nothing on Caden Schmidt, who looks like the breaking ball is what he likes to throw the most, but he hasn't found the strike zone in this first confrontation, at least not yet. And Kennett drops, uh, asks for time, steps out of the box, looks down at Coach Welch. We will close the book when we can on Zapata and his performance. Ball four, a four pitch walk for Caden Schmidt. And Kennett will go on down to first base and Blaine Ryan will take his batting helmet from him and run. So you got two courtesy runners on. Stratton at second running for Vlasic and Ryan at first running for Kennett. And here's Carter Groen. He has hit the ball hard. What will he do with Caden Schmidt? What has the scouting report been on the left-hander? That is over, but it's low to Groen. And the Ridgepoint fans are kind of messing with Caden Schmidt because, you know, if you get a four-pitch walk and then you start the next at-bat with a ball, then they're going to let you, uh, you're not going to let that out of your head. Groen steps back into the batter's box. Groen digs in. There's a strike on the inside corner, so they won't keep chanting ball whatever. One and one on Groen. He is one for two. Pitch on the way, and it's a chopper. Schmidt comes to get it near the third baseline, throws to third in time to get the force out. Nice play by Caden Schmidt. So Groen safe on the fielder's choice. Stratton becomes the second out. Kennett is now at second, growing at first. And Owen Ferris, 0 for 2 tonight, steps up there, and he would love to add to this 6 to 2 Ridgepoint lead. First pitch to him, strike at the letters. Slightly open stance, right-handed box. Schmidt kicks and comes home. There's another strike at the letters. Schmidt leans in, gets the sign. Ferris makes him wait a moment or two, maybe longer than he wanted to. Here's the 0-2. Ferris looks at a curveball that's way upstairs. That one came in at 74 miles per hour. So he too is good with, it's not that his, his fastball is all that hard, it's just that the curveball is so much slower and has a lot of movement. Ferris ready for the one-two. 
Here it comes. Upstairs, two and two. Zabata, four and one-thirds innings pitched, five hits allowed, six runs, five of them earned, struck out four, walked three. Ferris ready for the 2-2, here it comes. Swings and misses at a curveball, so Schmidt gets out of it. But Ridgepoint scores four times, and they take the lead. I'm sorry, they score two times. Sorry about that. They score two times, and they take a 6-2 lead over Pearland. If we go to the top of the sixth, you're listening to VibeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Don't forget to be with us tomorrow night for game two of this series. Same time as the game this evening. 6.40 batter up show, 7 p.m. first pitch. So Kellen Gratisar now has a four-run lead to protect. Now he faces Brett Smostrela. Righty versus righty, first pitch. High pop-up. Stevens rushing toward the mound, and now it's Vlasic who calls him off. And he's taller than Zions, so he gets it. Just behind the mound and to the right, about... 12 feet away from Kellen Gratisar, who's having a good time out there, laughing. So Gratisar has induced quite a few pop-ups and lazy fly balls. Now Braden Morse looks at a curveball in there for a strike. Or that might have been the slider, sorry. Morse ready, swing and a soft liner. One hopper to Stevens, he throws to Vlasic. 10 straight, retired by Kellen Gratisar. That, uh, that little liner to Stevens was soft as a baby's bottom. Maybe like a duck with sore feet landing on the 17th green at Augusta. Ends up going down as a ground out. Two away and the base is empty for Jace Caceres. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop up. Overall, let's see what Gratisar's numbers look like. Five and two thirds innings, six hits, two runs, both earned, struck out two, and has not walked anyone. I know Coach Welch loves that. First pitch is downstairs to a pinch hitter, Daniel Antiveros. Gratisar brings the second one. The first one was a ball. One hopper to Parker Martin at third. Cleans it up. Fires it to Vlasic. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. 11 straight Pearland Oilers put down by Kellen Gratisar. He is rolling. 6-2 Ridgepoint as we go to the bottom of the sixth. This is VibeFortBend.com.
First Tire and Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open Archer on Saturday. Volkswagen showroom First is open, Auto. and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, uh, I want to thank the producer extraordinaire inside the mothership at Vibe World Headquarters, Shane Sholwinski, for giving me some information. The Friendswood Mustangs looks like uh, they are in a position to sweep their series with Brenham. They're up two to nothing going to the bottom of the sixth, and they're already up a game on the Brenham Cubs. Now Josh Wilmot is going to come up and hit for Will Baker. Caden Schmidt still out there on the mound for the Pearland Oilers who trail 6-2. to two. Right-handed hitting Josh Wilmot. This is his first postseason appearance. Schmidt works from the stretch, brings the first pitch, tailing fastball, misses away 85 miles an hour. You, did you hear somebody say, not while we're pitching? That's a smart fan. It's a mom. That pitch is down low to Wilmot. Uh, she is saying what I was mentioning uh, before. You know, when, when your team's on defense, you shouldn't be messing around with a beach ball behind the backstop. Good point, mom. Thank you. Here's the 2-0. Wilmot takes a strike, 2-1. Lake Creek in Santa in uh, softball. Lake Creek leads Santa Fe 5 to 2 in the top of the 6. Lake Creek is already up in that series one game to nothing and going for the sweep. That pitch came into Wilmot and it's a ball I believe so 3 and 0 on Josh Wilmot. I thought one of them was a called strike. Schmidt ready brings it. And it's uh, swung on and fouled into the gathering darkness on the right side. So I think that was a 2-1 pitch. I think it was 2-1, so I think it uh, is now 2-2 two two on Wilmot. Here comes the pitch. Takes upstairs for ball four. So, well, it wasn't a 2-2 two -two pitch. Wilmot draws a walk. Good job, Josh. All right, so here comes Coach Hodges. Coach Rogers, I'm sorry. And he's going to replace Caden Schmidt. Pearland will go to its third Pitcher of the evening. We'll be right back on BikeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. 
And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. The next pitcher for Pearland is right hander Josh Graff. G R A F spells it just like the tennis legend Steffi Graff. And uh, I asked Coach Rogers for some stats, but not every coach gives me stats. Coach Welch doesn't give me stats. I have to dig them up on my own. So if I could tell you a little something about the performance of the new pitcher, Josh Graff, I would do so. But it'll be Mason Dossett, the number nine hitter for Ridgepoint, who will stand in and hit against him. Dossett walked in the third and scored the first of the four Ridgepoint runs that came home in that frame. After that, he hit a ground ball to second base. And I noticed that Parker Martin has come away from the on-deck area and wanted to talk to the home plate umpire, Kevin Ellis, about something. I'm not sure what. But here is Mason Dossett striding to the plate. All right, Josh Wilmot leading off the of first base. He just drew a walk. And what will we see from Josh Graff? Dossett in the front of the batter's box. Squares to bunt, pulls it back, called a strike on the outside corner. Dossett looks over at Coach Welch. And the uh, beach ball continues to be volleyed around. There's a strike at the letters. Nothing in two on Dossett. Nobody out. Bottom of the sixth. Six to two. Ridge point on top in this game one of the regional semifinal series. Check swing outside. Good take by Dossett. And it's one and two. The winner of this series will face either straight Jesuit or Katie. Graf comes set, throws over to first base and Wilmot dives back in. Graf comes set again, Dossett crowding the plate. Looks at a pitch outside, a 72 mile an hour curveball. Dossett seems to get closer to the plate with every batting stance. Here's the 2 2. Swung on and missed, and Graf strikes out the first hitter he sees. Just one away though, and now to the top of the order, Zion Stevens. He has to feel pretty good, reaching on an error and scoring in the third, walking and scoring in the fifth, but he wants to barrel one up. Wilmot dives back in on another pickoff throw from Graf. What happened there? My little natural sound, Mike isn't doing what it should. Ground ball toward third. Morse has it, throws out Stevens, and that gets that gets Wilmot to second. I'm a little flummoxed here. If you hear a scratchy sound, I apologize in advance, but I gotta get this natural sound back. You gotta feel like you're at the game. Okay, that's better. All right, so Parker Martin will come up with two outs. Wilmot at second base would love to come sprinting home. 
Graf brings it to Martin. First pitch swinging, lazy fly ball to left field. Smostrela comes in three or four steps and makes the play. So Pearland gets out of that with no damage, but they still trail Ridgepoint six to two as we go to the seventh. This is VibeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Well, I tell you what, Kellen Gratisar has pitched terrific baseball tonight. Had some trouble at first, but he was able to scatter six hits, and now he has put down 11 consecutive Pearland Oilers. He's enjoying a six to two lead. And as we go to this, this top of the seventh, six to two Ridge Point, and Justin Ogle leads off. First pitch to him, curve ball, came in there real slow, 65 miles an hour and evidently high. So uh, Gratisar was interviewed by Local Two Sports and he appeared on TV last night. They will have to interview him before every series. Here's a strike on the outside corner to Ogle. Also, Carter Groen, he was featured in an article yesterday on the Vipe site by Dennis Silva, my good friend. Here's the 0-1. Ogle, ground ball toward Vosses. Charges, scoops, throws on to Vlasic. Easy out. 12 straight, 12 straight retired. 6-3 that one goes. Now Logan Scott. Put down a sack bunt in the second inning that led to the first run or helped lead to the first run for Pearland. But it's not going to be Logan Scott. It's going to be Nico Partida. No relation to Tillman Fertita, <laughs> who, uh, you know, helped build a really nice basketball arena. Two or three hundred feet away from me. Partida is a right-handed hitter. And Gratisar is ready to go to work. Right-handed hitter in the back of the right-handed box. Gratisar delivers to Partida. First pitch swinging and he fouls it close to his foot. I'm so glad for his sake that it didn't actually hit his foot because that puppy would be barking. Nothing and one the count. Here's the pitch. Slow curve, and it's over a looping Vasas into left center field. And that is the first hit in a long time for Pearland. It breaks the string of 11 straight retired. And they're chanting, he's a freshman. But you know, uh, Ridgepoint has a freshman. Pearland has not confronted him yet. And unless this game really goes south, they're not going to see him tonight. All right. Partida leading off the of first. First pitch to Isaiah Castaneda. In there for a strike. Nothing in one. Here's the next pitch from Gratisar. That's a fly ball to center field. No problem for Dossett. Slide to the right. Easy catch. Two away. Yeah. 
According to the Game Changer page, operated by Ridgepoint mom Colette Mihalis, Gratisar is just gonna throw his 90th pitch. He might be at 91 or 92 right now. Back to the top of the order in Anthony Avalos. Pearland students not giving up, they're all standing. Here's the pitch to Avalos, upstairs for a ball. Gratisar comes set, doesn't look at Partita. Ground ball up the middle, Vasas behind second, shovels to Stevens, that will do it. Ridge Point captures game one by a score of six to two and they break the Pearland Oilers 17 game win streak. And we will be back here tomorrow night for game two on VitefortBend.com and Ridge Point will try to salt away this series in a sweep. But Pearland's a good ball club so you can't take anything for granted. We will be back with the totals here on VitefortBend.com right after this. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. First Tire and Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Tonight's exclusive VibeFortBend.com radio broadcast of the Rich Point Panthers and the Pearland Oilers in Game 1 of the Region 36A semifinal baseball playoff series is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, by First Tyrant Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best prices on tires, great service, anything your vehicle needs to run at its very best. All four locations open Monday through Saturday. Visit FirstTyrantAuto.com by Archer Volkswagen, open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway, and you will feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. And by the Needville Insurance Agency, put hundreds of dollars back in your pocket when Bradley Stavenon and the Needville Insurance Agency team shop all those insurance carriers. They'll save you money on your car insurance or your home insurance or both. Call Bradley and his team at Needville Insurance Agency 
979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com. So for the Ridgepoint Panthers, the home team tonight, they win with six runs on five hits, no errors, and five runners left on base. The Pearland Oilers, two runs on seven hits. They out hit Ridgepoint, but lost six to two. Pearland did make one error, and they also left five runners on base. So let's look at the offensive he heroes. Well, we can lead up to something. Carter Groen had a double. He went one for three. Justin Vosses got an RBI on a hit by pitch with the bases loaded, so he took one for the team. But the man of the hour is Travis Vlasic. Two for three with a pair of doubles, and he drove home five of the six Ridge Point runs. So he was certainly the man on the mound. The losing pitcher for the Pearland Oilers, Mark Zapata, four and one-thirds innings, five hits allowed, six runs, five of those earned. He struck out four and walked three. Kellen Gratisar, seven innings, the complete game win, does it economically, throwing only 92 pitches and 70% of them for strikes. Oh, that sounds beautiful, 70%. That is something that uh, Coach Welch could certainly live with every outing from his pitchers. Seven hits allowed, two runs, both of them earned. He only struck out two, but he didn't walk anybody, and that's the big deal. So Kellen Gratisar, he has now improved to 4-0 in the playoffs. And we'll be back here tomorrow night, 6.40 p.m. with the Batter Up Show. Roger Smith with you on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County sports. Remember, every game that we broadcast is not only live, it's also podcasted, and it is free. You can listen as many times as you want. Please share the podcast link with your buddies and be back here tomorrow night. And it's going to be everybody in a good mood because school is really over, even for the teachers when we come back here tomorrow. Good night, everybody, from the University of Houston. Again, our final score, Ridgepoint Panthers 6 and Pearland 2. Good night and God bless, and we'll talk to you tomorrow at 640. Thank you also, Shane Sholwinski. I should have mentioned your name much earlier. We'll be back tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>